was 24 years old and I was standing in a field in the Lake District. I was on a camping trip with some friends in a very remote location and had never done this before. When we got out there, I looked up and I said, that's really strange. When we left, there was a clear sky, but it looks like there are clouds up there, but they're kind of purple and blue. My friend looked at me and said, Zeon, you do know that's the Milky Way? And so it was. This was a really embarrassing experience for me. I was 24 years old and I'd never really looked at the night sky. I grew up in Birmingham where the light pollution was really bad and in any case were advised never to stay out after dark. It wasn't necessarily safe. Now, I couldn't shake this feeling that there was more to see up there. So I bought a night sky guide and I started learning constellations and I started looking up more, but I still felt like there's something missing. So then I bought a telescope and I started looking even more and I thought, oh, I want to see something really exciting. And I saw this, this is the Ring Nebula. This is a star that died. When our sun dies, it will look something like this. It's 2,000 light years away. Now, this was a transformational experience for me. It just, just changed the way that I viewed my place, not just on the planet, but in the universe. Stargazing for me has been an experience so profound that I struggle to put it into words. When the astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson talks about the cosmic perspective, I feel like I can relate to this. This is my interpretation. It's like lying on my deathbed and looking back on my life, like a whole overview of my life, but while I'm right here, alive. Stargazing has also been healing and empowering. When I started out, I was quite depressed. I spent most of my life dedicated to environmental activism. I'd written an evidence-based book, helping parents to raise their children with lower carbon footprints. And I looked around and I saw plastic pollution, environmental degradation, climate change, and I felt, I've done nothing, everything is bad. And when I started looking up, it was almost like the night sky was a reflection of this for me. So I was seeing the same kind of thoughts in my mind in the night sky. I'm so in insignificant. What's the point of me being here? And actually, a lot of people look up and they have this experience the first time. But I continued to look up. And over time, my perspective evolved. And I started thinking the op almost the opposite. Why do I get to be here? Like, how significant is this? Why do we get to be here? Why do we get to have free will and consciousness, and make our own decisions and live our own lives? Who are we? Why are we here? What does it all mean? These are questions that humankind has asked since the dawn of time. And it's not about finding the answers. It's also about questioning, the process of questioning and discovering and finding out. And this is something that space can really allow us to do. So what did I do next? I really wanted to see a planet. So I took my telescope out to the middle of nowhere um, in a field again, it was in Devon, really low light pollution, and I set it up using my infrared light box so as not to ruin my night vision. And I looked up and I saw Saturn. And as I was gazing at Saturn and then stepping away from the telescope and checking the lens to make sure it wasn't a trick, someone hadn't just drawn it on there, and then I was looking again, those are Saturn's rings. Two men pulled up behind me, I didn't even notice this, they were in a four by four, and they got out and the shining flashlights right in my face. Now this could have been, you know, a real conflict. It turns out I was on their land. It could have been full of anger, but I was so excited to share this with someone. I turned around and I said, you've got to come and see Saturn. Quick, before it moves, it will move. Then I'll have to adjust the telescope, come and see it. And the farmer and his son, who had come to check out what was happening on the outskirts of their land at 2 a.m. on a quiet country lane, in the pitch blackness with no mobile signal, they looked through the telescope and they were just blown away. What could have been a conflict just dissipated in the cosmic perspective. It was incredible. And we just stood there freezing cold because stargazing is cold, let's face it. Freezing cold, talking about planets and talking about the sky. And it was just incredible. And the farmer said to me, do you know, I'm often out here after dark in my field, but I have never looked up. I will now. It's a really amazing moment. And he said, he shook my hand and he said, you can come back here anytime you like. You can use this land anytime you like. 
Why do so few of us look up? So many of us seek some kind of spiritual connection, some kind of meaning, and it's all up there to see. Now, there are barriers, I recognize that. Telescopes are expensive, they're hard to set up, you have to be a little bit in the know to use them. Astronomy can be quite elitist and closed. But also, there's a bigger problem. Atmospheric pollution, light pollution. Now, when you look at this, the next thing that I tell you will be more believable. In 1610, Galileo made his own telescope. 1610, his own technology, made his own telescope, went out to a beach and looked up and saw three of Jupiter's moons. Not just Jupiter, but the moons, because he wasn't contending with the light pollution that we have today. Human history has long been entwined with the stars. We've used them to navigate. We've used them to tell the time. We used to live mostly out under the open sky. What if when we lost all that to busy lives and light pollution, we lost something that makes us human? What if we lost something that connects us to something bigger, connects us to each other? Now, I'm a science communicator, and I tend to, when I talk, when I write, I tend to come from an evidence base and say, here's the evidence and here's the argument. Now, I don't have any evidence for you today. I only have anecdotes, I only have my own stories, but I'm just here to say, what if, what if we are missing out on something incredible? Stars are entwined with our stories. When we look up, we look to the heavens, when we wish it's upon a star. The Vikings, they saw in the constellations their gods Thor and Odin and Freya. They had their own name for the Milky Way, they called it the Bifrost, meaning a passage between two worlds. Stars have long guided us across deserts, to kings, to gods, and through our own lives, through our own stories. How do we get back there? Remember the 24-year-old urban dweller in the field? She'd never seen the Milky Way. Was she disconnected from something bigger than herself? What if she inherited human history and learning through the skies? Do you know why we call it the Milky Way? It's another story. It comes from Greek mythology. So Zeus had a son called Heracles, and when he got home, he saw that his wife Hera was sleeping, and he put Heracles on her breast to breastfeed as she slept. But when she woke up and she saw Heracles there, she was disgusted, because Heracles was a product of an affair that Zeus had. So she pushed the baby off her breast, sending a spur of breast milk into the sky. And that is why we call it the Milky Way. <laughs> True story. But so often we are like the farmer. We are looking down at our feet while up above, the great bear and the big dipper cross by. The International Space Station soars above us 16 times a day, shooting stars fly by unnoticed. But what if, like the farmer, we choose to make a small change? What if we choose to form a new habit? This image was taken in 1990 by one of the Voyager space probes as it left our solar system. It spun on its axis and it took an image of the Earth. Now, you probably can't even see it in there, but it is in there. Carl Sagan, the astrophysicist, saw this image and said that the Earth is merely a mote of dust suspended in a sunbeam. This was a profound moment for humanity. We'd never seen ourselves from this distance before. Space isn't just up there. It's all around us. It blankets us. We are held in space. It's a part of us and a part of our stories. So here's my idea. Why don't we start looking up? Why don't you join me and go and stand in a field. And maybe, if we do it enough, and again and again, we can inherit something, something that we lost a long time ago. All we need to do is make a small change, and then another, and another. And together, we can reclaim the stars, and maybe, just maybe, discover something about ourselves along with it.